There are four main ways of telling whether data is skewed. Skewed a bit like this pub leaning to one side. First way is by just looking at the data. If it's leaning towards the y-axis and they're getting on, that's the way I remember it, they're, they like each other, they're leaning towards each other, that's a positive skew. Things are happy and positive. If the data is leaning away from the y-axis, it's a negative skew, they're not getting on very well. And if the data is nice and symmetrical around the middle, that's called simply a symmetrical skew. So first, simply by looking at the data, and it could be in a, in a stem and leaf diagram as well, if it's bulging away from the y-axis, it's negatively skewed. If it's bulging towards, it's positively skewed. The second way is to look at the box plot. Now here, the box plot, which is linked to this data, is positively skewed, because you can see it's leaning towards the left. Just like the data is leaning towards the left, it's leaning towards the y-axis, the data is positively skewed, so the box plot is also positively skewed. So that's the second way, looking at box plots. The third way is more quantitative. If the mode is less than the median, which is itself less than the mean, therefore it's going to be positive. Similarly, if the mode, which is the tallest bit on the graph, is greater than the median, which is the middle person, which is greater than the mean in the middle of the bulk, then it's negatively skewed. Now, for that, you don't even need to look at a graph. You can just work out each of those and see which is bigger. And if you see a trend with the mode as the smallest, then you know it's positive. If you see a trend with the mode being the biggest, you know it's negative. And if, it's, if they're roughly equal, it's symmetrical. The fourth and final way is a bit more quantitative and a little bit more complicated. You look at three times the mean minus the median divided by the standard deviation. And we've looked at in another video how to work out standard deviation. And that does make some sort of sense because here, for a positive skew, the mean is going to be bigger than the median. So this number is going to be positive. So the whole number is going to be quite positive. And a positive number shows you a positive skew. If the number turns out negative, that's because the mean was less than the median. And these always seem to turn out, well, always do turn out between minus 1 and 1. And that shows you the skew. Let's do an actual question. You get a fair few marks for this, so it's, it's worth knowing. The following stem and leaf diagram shows the exam scores of Sarah as she prepared for her M1 test. And you can see from the data that her scores are getting better, and she's probably going to end up with 100%. Write down the modal score and the median. Well, the modal score is the score that comes up the most often. So which score of Sarah did she get the most often? It was 88% or 88 marks because that came up three times and the others only came up twice, for example, 59. That's the modal score, 88. What about the median? Well, if you count this, you'll see that there's 30 scores. Now, whenever it's an even number, you've got to be very careful when working out the median. Most people get 30, they divide it by 2, and then they look for the 15th score, and they say, that's the median. But remember, when it's an even number, it will be in between two results. So I'm not going to look at the 15th score. I'm going to look at halfway between the 15th and the 16th. Remember, when it's even numbers, you've got to be careful. It's going to be halfway between two numbers. That's 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15th was 77, and 16th is 80. Halfway between those two should be 78.5. Yes, 78.5. Okay. Now it says, for these data, the sum of x is 2,285, and the sum of x squared is this number. Calculate the mean and standard deviation. Well, mean, I think you know how to do that. You simply add them all up and divide by how many there are. Well, thankfully, they've added them up for us. The sum of x, they say, is this. So we simply need to divide that by how many people there were, or how many results there were, which was 30. So the mean is 76. 76.2 and now we can go on to standard deviation and the formula for that or the way I remember it you might remember the formula I remember square it 
mean it, mean it and square it, or take away, mean it and square it. And I just imagine someone in my head screaming at me, square it, mean it, you're not meaning it, square it. But anyway, that's just me, I'm a bit weird. How are we going to do that? Well, they've squared the numbers already, and they've added them up, so that's good. All we need to do now to get the mean of those squared numbers is divide that by 30. So 181,543 divide by 30, and we get 6,051.43. 6,051.43. Now we take away the mean squared. The mean we already worked out was 76.2, and that mean squared is 5,806.44. 5,806.44. But actually, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna double check that because I rounded the mean. You've always got to be very careful. If I divide that by 30, I actually got this number, and that number squared is 5,801.36. You have to be very careful not to round too early. I'm gonna pretend like I did that mistake on purpose, but I didn't really. But hopefully you learned from that experience. Don't round it too early. You can round your answer, only after you've done all the calculations with the long digits, not rounded. Okay, so we're going to minus those two. And what do we get? 6,051.43. Take away this answer. And that's 250.07 if I round. 250.07. I don't even need to write that down because remember that's the variance. To find the standard deviation, I need to square root this. And that's 15.81. So the standard deviation is 15.81. Okay, almost there. We've calculated the mean and the standard deviation. That was good practice. Use two methods to show that these data are negatively skewed. First, we can just visually see it, but that wouldn't count as a quantitative answer. So what we're going to have to do? Well, notice the mode was the biggest, followed by the median. So there we are. There's our first method using this formula here for negative skew which you can write down in your answer mode greater than median greater than mean that's one demonstration that is negatively skewed and the second demonstration was this more complicated method three times mean take away median divided by standard deviation which we're about to do right now isn't this amazing three times the mean which is I remember 76.16 take away the median which was 78.5 jumping around a bit here all of that divided by the standard deviation which was 15.81 and notice we're getting a number between minus 1 and 1 minus 0 0.44 minus 0 0.44 which doesn't take a genius to know is a negative number demonstrating negative skew and wasn't that fun now we know all about skew in statistical data.